This is Geometry, Chapter 1, Section 3, in which we will learn about distance and midpoint. We'll start with distance. The distance between two points is the length of the segment that connects them. Now there are two possibilities. We could be looking at a segment that is on a convenient number line, or we could be looking at a segment in an XY graph type situation, and we'll get formulas for both of those. We'll start with the easy case. If it happens to be on a number line you can use, then the distance is nothing more than subtraction. If point P is at X and point Q is at Y, just two values on the number line, then the distance between P and Q is the absolute value of the difference. And you can subtract in either order. It doesn't matter because you're doing the absolute value, it's going to come out positive regardless. So let's do a couple of those, and then we'll let you try one. I want the distance from A to C. A is at negative 8, C is at negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 8 minus negative 3. Subtracting that gives me negative 5, and the absolute value of that is 5. So the distance from A to C is 5. If you want to, you could actually count that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's up to you. C to E. C is at negative 3. E is at 5. So we're looking for negative 3 minus 5, which is negative 8, and the absolute value of that is 8. So I'm going to ask you to pause here and try this one, find the distance from B to F, and then come back and check your answer. So B to F, negative 5 over to 9 is a distance of 14. If we're in an XY graph, coordinate plane situation, then the formula is a little more complex. Okay, a lot more complex. If the two points are X1, Y1, and X2, Y2, just two locations, then the formula is this beauty. The square root of X1 minus X2 squared plus Y1 minus Y2 squared. This is a glorified version of the Pythagorean Theorem. And if you want to see how that comes about, I can show you that in class sometime. But for now, let's just do some distance work. We have C at negative 4, negative 6, and D at 5, negative 1. Well, we know what X1 and Y1 are x1 and y1, we know what x2 and y2 are, let's plug them in. Negative 4 minus 5 squared, that's the x's. Negative 6 minus negative 1 squared, that's the y's. Now negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9 squared. Negative 6 minus negative 1 gives us negative 5 squared. Negative 9 squared and negative 5 squared come out clean. So we get the square root of 106. Or, if you want to punch that into your calculator, you get 10.296. Now we'll let you try to find a distance and see how you do. You're looking for the distance between J and K. Pause here, take a look at it, see what you get. So we'll plug into the formula again, subtract the two x values, subtract the two y values, a little arithmetic, and we find out that our distance is 10. Now the other thing we're going to deal with is midpoint. The midpoint of a segment is the point that's halfway between the two. It divides it into two equal parts. 
And like we did before, you can either do this with a number line if you happen to have one handy on the problem, or with coordinates. And either way, they're both pretty easy. If we happen to have a number line, it's just the average of the two values. So x and y, add them up, divide by 2, and you've got your midpoint. So let's find the midpoint from A to B. A is at negative 3. B is at 9. Well, the formula for the midpoint is add the two values, negative 3 plus 9, and take half. And we get that the midpoint is at 3. I'm going to ask you again to pause your video. Find the midpoint of segment CD. Come back, check your result. The two points are at negative 10 and 2. 2 and negative 10, when you average those out, you get negative 4. And while we're talking about midpoints, we need to talk about the term segment bisector. It's anything that goes through the midpoint. It can be the midpoint itself, it can be a line, it can be a segment, it can be a plane. Anything that passes through that midpoint is a bisector. Now if our points are in the xy plane in the coordinate graph, graph situation, then the midpoint is similar to the other one. You have this beautiful formula, x1 plus x2 over 2, average of the x's, and then the average of the y's, y1 plus y2 over 2. So if we're finding the midpoint from J to K, 5, 12 to 3, 4, we need the midpoint. Let's plug into the trusty formula. Add the two x's and divide by 2. Add the two y's and divide by 2. If we add the two x's and take half, we get 4, and then 8 for y's. So 4, 8 is our midpoint. Now they can throw this at us in a couple of different ways. They can ask us, given the midpoint, can we find the other end? So we know the segment starts at negative 8, 6, and the middle is negative 5, 10, and our job is to figure out the other end of the segment. Well, to do that, we're going to take each part of it separately. We're going to do a thing with the x's. The midpoint value, negative 5, is equal to, we don't know what g is, plus negative 8 over 2. And then we'll do the same thing with the y's. The midpoint value, 10, is equal to y, we don't know, plus 6 over 2. These are two things we can solve. Multiply by 2, we get negative 10 equals x minus 8. I cleaned up the plus negative 8 to make minus 8. And then solve for x. Similarly for y, we'll multiply by 2 and then we'll solve. So our point g is negative 2 and 14. Another kind of problem they can throw at us here is if they tell me Q is the midpoint, they want me to find the length from P to Q. Well, what do we know about these two segments, PQ and QR? If Q is the midpoint, this segment, PQ, is equal to the segment QR. So 9Y minus 2 has to be equal to 14 plus 5Y. Well, we can solve this. Move the 5y over and move the 2 over. And divide. So now we know how big y is, but that's not the answer to the question. They want to know how big is pq. Well, pq is 9 times y minus 2. 9 times 4 is 36. Minus 2 is 34. 
thought so. I'll reveal all those for you again. So as usual, if you had questions, hopefully you jotted those down. We're dealing with midpoints and distances, not too complicated yet. But uh, bring those questions in with you, and we'll see you in class.